All right, man. It's been a while. Yes, sir. Yeah. I think like two months or something. No, it's, I actually look. I actually looked at your profile. It has been since August. Wow. <laughs> yes, so about double. I guess that's why it's grown out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. Because it was a one on the side. It was. Yeah. Because that was. I've only cut your hair. That was the first time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So. You tell me. I mean, what are you thinking? You know. Like, okay. Back. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's been four months, so everything right. is everything's pretty much right. kind of out of whack. So, so just yeah. Yeah. And then square off the back of the neck. Uh, I gotta move my collar or whatever. Oh yeah, no, that should be fine. Okay. Um, if we're gonna go down to a one, that's already super short, you know. So normally I just uh, fade out the back. Normally I recommend just fading it out, you know. Um, I yeah, you. Gives, oh. gives you a little more life out of it, especially if it's going to be another yeah. four months. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, I, uh, I like this, the type of haircut I get because I can let it grow out. Yeah, well, of, that's good. I mean, that's it's, a... It's getting, like, over my ears and stuff now. So right, yeah, of course. I mean, it actually, I'm surprised that this, um, since I've only cut your hair once, sometimes it's, like, kind of... I haven't touched it at and all. And it's been four months. I've touched up the beard a little bit. Yeah. Right. Uh... Uh, August, September, October, November. Almost, I mean, beginning of August, so four ish. So yeah, summer, yeah. Four and some change. I, I actually like, really like the way this is. I'm surprised. Honestly, I couldn't quite remember, like, since I'd only cut your hair once and it's been a while, you know, kind of forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go back down to a one. Uh, and then fade from there, and then um, we're pretty much, I mean, from where it's at now, we're pretty much doing a full-blown, like, <laughs> you know, style change, transformation. Uh, I mean, and I, and I only say style change almost because it almost looks like your hair, you know, is, like, intentionally worn longer, which is good. I mean, it's good that, you know, I grew out uh, that well. Uh, have you ever have you ever considered, like, where, like keeping it a bit... I actually, like, I mean, the last time I came in, my hair was down to my shoulders. Yeah, I, I do remember I that. Yeah, I remember that. So I've had it like every which way possible. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of like the clean, Sure. The clean yeah, yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. Look, yeah. Awesome. But cool. I don't, I don't mind it when it gets this long, but it's yeah. a, you got to do a little more to maintain it. Too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. And I still have that, uh, that tea tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still putting that in there. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Four months and, like, how, how much how much of it have you used? Uh, I'm pretty sure I told you, you like, that's what I'm like saying. I told you. I tell everybody, I'm like, dude, it'll last you probably a year. Yeah. And so. I just, like, barely run my fingers through a little bit. Yep. Like so. you told me before, like, keeps the, keeps the hole, but it lets it flow. Like yeah, yeah, it doesn't really have much hold to it or like anything like that. Yeah. Um, uh, just the uh, the tea tree, just the hair and body like moisturizer, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, the Gibbs. For, I'm not sure what it's called. The Gibbs little. It's a squeeze bottle, right? The Gibbs one. Oh, the matte cream. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the hair. Like the like no, no, no. If it's, it's, it's like if it's a can, you're talking. About, yeah, 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 yeah. I was. They're those are both tea tree, like they both both those products. Yeah, if you're talking about the matte cream. Yeah, yeah. Either way, I mean, a little bit goes a long way for sure. Um, it's like waxy kind of. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, but it definitely lets the hair like do its own thing. It's not like uh, overly shiny, it gives it like a healthy amount of shine, you know. Um, yeah, so just getting this all wet down, and we're going to. Uh, I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with uh, just sectioning off the top. Uh, 
and then uh, I'm going to go through and yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm going to basically kind of horseshoe the top to separate the top from the sides, um, especially because it's been a while. So, you know, we really want to establish, um, you know, what length belongs where. Uh, and we don't want to be floppy on top. Right. right. Well, yeah, I mean, we just don't want to confuse like what, you know, was part of the, you know, coming from the one to the weight building up to the longer hair with the actual longer hair, you know what I mean? But all of this has gotten so long now that it can move around with the rest of this. So we just wanna, yeah, establish like uh, some clean, clean sections. Um, yeah, so right here, what's that? What is that technique there? Right here, uh, so I'm just, I'm finding where the head rounds. Um, this is, so I took a, a profile part, which is just this middle part, and then I'm just finding where the head, right where the comb kind of teeters at. And then that's going to be where I separate uh, the front from the back. Radial parting, um, its purpose is to separate your front working sections, essentially, uh, from your back working sections. So right there is our, yeah, is our radial parting. And so then what I would do, since we are going to section off the top from there, I would just take that and then you would kind of find the round of the head right here as well. Same thing. And then that's where I would take my section here uh, to recession. We'll go, yeah, we'll go just a little lower to our recession and then yeah, and then there's our first subsection. Yeah, so we'll just, uh, ooh, I got the whistle going on. You know, there's... No worries, yeah. Yeah, so there's our first uh, subsection, front from the back, and then top. Uh, yeah, subsection. And then same with the other side. Typically, and you can tell, a lot of times you don't even, you know, if you don't necessarily, uh, if you're unsure, like if you're uncomfortable of like, oh, well, I can't really tell where the round of the head is, or if you're unsure of if your radial parting is, is um, equal, is symmetrical, lined up on both sides, you can usually tell when you come right down here, down be just behind, kind of behind the ear, along the top of the ear, you can usually tell where the hair kind of wants to grow forward and back. So that has no problem coming back right there. So that tells me that that's, yeah, that's where we want it to be. So that's kind of just like a, a double check. Um, yeah, if you're unsure. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta listen to what the hair is telling you. Um, so yeah. Um, it's always good to not get too caught up in systematic cutting um, because there is, if it was systematic, if we were to focus on, you know, just systematic cutting only, well, then, you know, then yes, robots would be able to take our jobs. So, exactly, yeah. And you might, you know, think something's going to go a certain way. Well, I ran through my steps. Why does this not turn out how it needs to be? Uh, well, because, I mean, part of this is very much uh, visual as well. Uh, so, um, so now I'm going to take, and we're going to be getting rid of all of this, most of this stuff from, you know, practically the occipital down. We're going to be getting rid of all that but I just want to get my length put in there. And I really want to 
And the reason I'm doing this first is because I want to establish and ensure that I am keeping the necessary amount of weight to keep, especially right along the crown of the head. So we're gonna go square. Um, now, following the shape of the head, you know, this would be round, uh, but we're gonna come straight, yep, 90 degrees off the head, and we're gonna go And we're just going to take that and then let's see yeah. and then we'll leave we'll leave that for when we go to connect with the top so then i'm going to split that take my next one and if you lose your guide you can always go back but i should be able to see my guide right there there's my guide so we are working uh, with a traveling guide um, because I want to keep this square I am over directing to the previous section so what what that means over direction what that means is I'm going uh, section one and then I'm going two into one three into two, four into three, if five, you know, five into four, and so on. Uh, and that's just gonna help us maintain, yeah, our square shape. Yep, so guide, there it is. Yep, and we'll go ahead and take one more for this side, pulling uh, four, four into, into three, so, yeah, and there's my, well, I'm sorry, there's my guy there, yeah, and, yeah, that's just kind of a, you know, and all this is going to be gone, for the most part, you know, so we're just trying to establish what we want to keep, um, because with this much growth, we don't want to just go in blindly with clippers and be wondering where to stop. You know, I mean, do we stop? Do we stop here? Do we stop there? Do we stop? Do we end up stopping at a point where it's too late? You know, um, and even if we, even if you do, you know, stop soon enough, well, then you're left with a ton of weight because we have all this growth and you're going into it with clippers, thus creating a lot of graduation, a lot of buildup of weight that you then have to go in there and eliminate anyways. So, um, yeah, and then we're gonna go, that was one, two, so then we're gonna go uh, two, uh, or I'm sorry, three into two, yeah, so, if I were cutting, uh, if I were not trying to keep this square horizontally, then I would pull it straight out from the head the way it grows, follow the round of the head. But I'm just over directing one section back. Yep, guide, there it is. Yep. And I'm not really worried about much of this because my clippers, when I, now that I'm establishing kind of this, this, uh, this boundary, sort of this zone, when we go through this with clippers and debulk, like a three or a four or something, the clippers are going to find that line. They're going to find it, and it's it, and it's yeah, it's it's kind of a feel thing. But yeah, once we uh, finish all of our wet cutting and everything, uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean. Clippers will, if you can't see it visually, which uh, probably will be able to. Um, Clippers are going to find it for us. Yeah, there's our guide right there. Why did you switch your hand position there? Um, that's a good question. Um, mainly because I feel like if I am pushing 
I feel like sometimes I can end up over directing too much, like too far back, you know? Um, and so like, because I want to be square, so like trying to do this motion, like scoop out that way. Um, and then where, yeah, when I'm pushing, I feel like I can over direct too much. Whereas when I'm here, I can also see this side of the head. Whereas when I'm over here, I can't really see that section. So if I just stand essentially like my body position, right where I want to distribute the section from the head, then I have a clear vision of where that section is being distributed from. Um, so I know that I am distributing this right into the previous section the way that I want to. And perfect. Right there. Yeah. So there's kind of our foundation. Now when we kind of bring this together, you can somewhat see a little bit of where that's coming together there. Now, of course, all of this, but we have, you know, a bit of our foundation there for this area. Um, now, uh, easy technique that I like to use to, to expedite um, establishing weight through the sides. Now, it all has to flow, right? So how do we connect this with this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to move the rest of that out of the way. And we're going to take just a little section of what I've already done. Now, I'm going to take just one section. That's all I need. It's really all I need. And I'm going to use what I've already done as a guide. That corner right there is my guide. So I'm combing up because I want to be at 90 degrees. If not even a little, if not even a little higher, but I'm gonna come straight out from the head because 90 degrees is just right at the, 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 the brink of the change between layering and graduation. And so I'm just gonna follow this and so for those uh, newer to cutting hair 90 degrees means you're going straight out from the head essentially yeah 90 degrees is yes now uh now in a, from a vertical section standpoint 90 degrees is referred to a round haircut so 90 degrees it basically, it basically follows the shape of the head, right? Um, so if the head rounds this way, 90 degrees is pull, like, yeah, straight out from where it grows. So if we were to take that section, you know, a section here and work all the way back, it would, it would follow the shape of the head. So pull here, 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 and then there, there. And it just perfectly, follows the shape of the head. Um, now, because we are working horizontally, uh, 90 degrees is a matter of up and down, not so much left, right. Uh, so, now, yeah, now like if I wanted to build graduation, then anything below 90 degrees, graduation. Uh, anything 90 and above, <laughs> layer. Um, difference between layering and graduation is um, it's pretty simple. Uh, graduation is going to be a, a buildup of weight. And if you want to see a quick example of what graduation is and to demonstrate it. So if I were to um, distribute this below 90 degrees, let's say a 45, then you see the shape that that establishes. This is the longest point. This is the shortest point. So when that falls, see how that collapses and how it's going to leave that heavy that would develop a pretty you know heavy weight very visible weight line now if we go to 90 or let's say we even go you know a little higher you know and we cut that there right now we're eliminating weight because you know this is no longer the longest point laying on top of here so when that collapses you see how much so like softer that's kind of going to fall um, that's, I mean, you know, in a, in a nutshell, 
the only difference between graduation and layering. Um, graduation is a buildup of weight, layering is a removal of weight. So, um, yeah, so we're just gonna move, do the same thing on the other side, take a little piece of what we had, what we did there, and take our little vertical section. Yeah, so there's my, there's my corner there. And we're gonna come there. And now, um, horizontally, I am, yes. <laughs> Are you? No shit. Or I'm so, crap. <laughs> Let me bleep that out. <laughs> it is not live. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, being a lefty is tough, man. You know why? Because, man, when I first started cutting hair, trying to watch videos, YouTube video tutorials, stuff like that, and everybody's have to, you know, mirror it. You know, you ever try and like do something uh, in the mirror of a mirror? You know, and your arms like all the way over here, and you're like, you're like, why? And you're like, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, your brain can't comprehend it at the time. And then that's how you mess yourself up. That's why I come to you guys. Yep. So I don't have to scream at myself in the back. So we can already see, like, uh, this hair right here. See how it has a little jump to it. That hair that I just trimmed. Now, that's fine. That's not a big deal. But this is why we do our wet cutting first. Because if I had taken clippers, to that area and obliterated that I mean like and it'll stay there too you know like yeah I mean this is why yeah see right there that corner now that's fine he's also granted he's, his hair it's also been four months so with all the weight and all that of the hair that um, has grown can also kind of force it into developing, you know, certain streams and all that. Um, another reason why I like to do wet cutting first, because before I get to the sides, um, I'm gonna blow dry all of this. So it gives me a chance to reset any patterns that the hair may have developed, um, you know, while it's been overgrown or in between the last haircut. Whereas like, you know, whereas just like going into some of this blindly I mean there's so much hair you know and uh, this is just I mean is it I get it is it more time-consuming sure I mean yes but you know would you rather I don't know would you rather spend the time mapping mapping it out and having a plan and, and cutting intentionally or would you rather spend the time going back and cutting another spot three times four times however many times you know that you've already been over um and don't get me wrong i'm not saying you know that this is um absolutely fail safe or anything like we're like once i do the sides yeah i'm gonna have to go back and do a little bit of connecting from the sides to the top but for the most part well yeah pretty much entirely i'm gonna have the entire shape horizontally and vertically um establish throughout this entire haircut and then I may have to do a little bit of softening to connect the sides to the top and that's all but overall you know you just you want to be in control of you know you want to decide so we're gonna go let's see let's see how much length we have in the front so that's really long. It's been four months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I am going to work actually from the back to the front. So you can see I already took that first section there. Get a couple there. Get rid of half. Grab another half. 
And keeping it square for now, the reason I'm not trying to over direct yet and start building up length is because we are already at the highest point of the head right now. So it does not need any extra length. The change uh, of in elevation uh, from the shape of the head does that for us. This is a much higher point of the head than here. So even if, even if this is the same length as this, this is going to seem longer because of the change in the shape of the head. And that is going to make it more difficult to pull the hair back, to keep the hair back. You know, you see your like side part hairstyles, people can't keep the hair out of the corner of their eye. You know, it's always falling. It's usually because the length in here has nowhere to go. And so what it does is it pushes, pushes the other hair. Because uh, the front, now as the head starts to, okay, here's our apex. See how big of a difference that is? How much the head rounds down? Now how about here? We have the front, very front of the head, right? And then here. <laughs> see how much that rounds down the very front hairline? So, we're already very much working against gravity just to keep that hair up and back. So, we want to allow the hair in the front to sort of sit on top of everything else as opposed to running into everything else. And now you might be thinking, oh, well, that's going to make it look heavy. Isn't that going to look like a line of length? Not necessarily, no, because we're not disconnecting the shape here. This is a very smooth, linear shape. Um, so me, over directing this back a bit, we went essentially square, square, and then into slightly triangular. Um, yeah, so you would have like we were talking about earlier, 90 degrees, 90 degrees here, round, right? So round would mean cutting that corner off. Square, square would even be cutting a little bit more corner off. And then we have triangular. And there we go. So now we got that. So I'm gonna take, uh, this was a profile section. So I'm going to take my profile section and I'm going to split it in half. So I got half my guide over here, half my guide over there. And uh, one thing you definitely want to do is you want to make sure you keep the hair nice and wet because you don't want to be, you don't want to be, um, and then, you know, the hair elongates when it's wet, shrinks when it dries. And so if you're doing, sorry if I'm spraying your phone. When you're doing different parts of the haircut and the hair starts to dry and you just keep going, well, then you're not really, you don't really have an accurate perception of what length, you know, you're actually uh, putting into the haircut. Uh, so we have, so I'm going to work vertical sections. So I split our guide that we just created in half. So half our guide on each side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another vertical section, move that out of the way, and then we're going to comb this up and we should see our guide right here. Yep, there's a guide. So we're just going to snip Get rid of half, pick up another half. Check for your guide. Yep, there it is. Pick up another. And if you're unsure, that's the thing, is you don't really, I don't really have to guess of, oh, where exactly did I start the triangular part of it? Well, I could see right there, that's my guide. So I don't really have to, you know, guess. Um, and if you lose your guide, you just take a smaller, take a smaller section. That's the biggest thing is your guide section 
really, if you really want to stay organized, the section you're using as your guide should be about as large, honestly, if not larger than the, the working section. So, well, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna move that back over as well, just to get some of that out of the way. And here we go. Okay. And guide. And guide. Yep. You always comb. You always comb into your guide. You never comb the guide to you because then you're moving your guide. So you always comb into the guide. And how you distribute from the root is how you create your shape. So this was something I struggled with when I first started learning how to do vertical uh, cutting with a traveling guide. It's getting a clean section. So. What I, what I do is pretty, it just, it's just repetition. I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way. So you just, I start with my thumb, right? I start with my thumb, holding the comb, I start with my thumb, and I start, and I kind of secure, you know, secure here. And then I, so then I go, I push through the hair, and then I use my thumb where I wanna stop to hold that hair. Yeah, hold that hair, don't let go of it. Comb, move that out of the way. And don't let go of it yet. Get your comb in there, into that parting that you just made, you know, and then comb. Yeah, see, and then you have a nice, nice clean section. And guide, perfect, right there. Get rid of some of that. Guide. I have a habit of cutting really close to my fingers, probably why my fingers are so destroyed. Um, uh, yeah, don't do that because muscle memory is hard to break. And yeah, I mean, I could easily just, you know, leave myself like, well, see, I can't even consciously hardly do it. I could easily leave myself that much room, you know, and just cut there. Uh, why don't I? I have no idea. But like I said, bad habits are hard to break. But if you, you know, pay, pay attention and you are mindful of things, uh, you know, it is possible to change them. Um, there's not really any particular reason I'm working from front to back on this one. Uh, it's just because there's really not much uh, length left for me to elevate this high. So I'm kind of just sort of scooping up like whatever will reach. Anything that'll reach, cut it. You know, we got our shape in there. If it reaches, cut it. If it doesn't, well, it's gonna fall. So then we don't need to worry about it. So then if you come over here, you can see, yeah, for the most part, see, we kind of got our shape put in there pretty decently. And then, you know, there's our little bit of, now are we gonna go through and probably eliminate some of this? Yes, of course, but this also is not normal speed. So, um, yeah. So I know that uh, my guide is somewhere in there because it's a little bit past the center of the head. So I'm gonna move out of the way what I don't need. Yep, and we'll go here again. Now this may or may, I'm not exactly sure. I was kind of taking a ballpark of where my guide would probably be. I might have taken too big of a section. Okay, I think I did. Um, see? 
prime example of me losing the guide. But that's okay, because I know the guide is there. I just have to find it. Yep, exactly. Yep, just too big of a section. Um, yeah, but we know the guide is there. So, you know, if that happens, you don't have to, there it is. And guide, right there, yep. There's our guide. Yep. So we're gonna cut. Uh, yeah, should be able to see it right there. Yeah, perfect. You know, and I don't, I'm taking a thin enough section to where I don't even, I really don't have to, I mean, obviously there's only a couple here's there, but you know, to, okay, so I'm a little bit into the working section from the last side of the head, which is fine. You know, at least I've, you know, identified where my guide is now. So then we will just take a small, now we're good. Yeah, so then I'll take a small working section. There. And just right back into the same thing. Guide. And guide. Make sure. Yep. Okay. Right. Let me not do that. Yep. There we go. Move that out of the way. Guide. So there's obviously a lot of excess length here. And oh, you know what? Hmm. Looks like maybe there's a little more corner on this side than I would like. Um, and that's okay. Not a big deal. We can go back and soften that. But typically. I'm going to assume what that's coming from is I am pushing the hair too far. We're directing horizontally too much. So thus leaving this corner long because it's kind of the further you over direct away from uh, where the hair naturally lives, the more length you're going to retain. Excellent. Okay, so for the most part, we are down to our last section. So that is when, like there's not a lot left here, right? So no need to really be all organized because we already, we already established this. And if we try and comb this all the way up anyways, it's not gonna, it's not going to reach. So it doesn't matter, right? Because by the time I get to my guide, all that's gonna fall. So when it's your last section, that's why I say, if it reaches, cut it. If it doesn't, well, then, well, you're not gonna cut it anyways, because it's not gonna reach your guide. Guide. Yeah, so I'm literally just combing, just to make sure I have all the long hair. Yeah. There we go. And perfect. There's our guide, right there. I'll do one more. Yep, okay. Now, let's see. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little connection technique just because I know like, you know, 
but we're gonna try and beat that before we get to the clipper work. So I'm gonna go from recession to about the crown area. I'm gonna go, well, not quite that steep. We'll go here. Yep, and then we'll go same. There we go. Okay. All right. So now we have an opportunity to take just little vertical sections and see our um, any disconnection that we. This gives us control of any disconnection between the top and the sides. So I'm going to start with just like a slight diagonal back. Right. So then. I can see, now that is that little, those horizontal sections that we took, right, earlier through the sides. Now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that again. This is all just regrowth, you know, longer hair. And so, I'm gonna keep it at kind of 90, but I am going to change my finger angle. So I'm gonna clip that a little bit now. Um, as I work back, I am going to do the same thing that we were doing before, where I'm going to pull to the previous. Yep. There. And I'm going to even pull a little, yeah, there's a guide under there. Make sure I actually get all those. There we go. Yeah. Now with diagonal sections, with diagonal sections, the more, well, I guess with sections in general, the more, uh, typically the more vertical, the more vertical that you are, you know, the less, or at least closer to vertical that you are, if we're talking diagonal sections, the less uh, graduation or weight buildup um, you're going to have. Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that, that's pretty nice. So that's a little, that's a little low. Uh, and I am gonna wet this hair down a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so the clo more like closer to horizontal we are. If we're talking diagonal sections, like if I'm here, you know, generally that's going to be much more, and that's going to retain much more weight versus length. Um, whereas if I'm, you know, say here or even there, then yeah, that's going to be a less heavy uh, result. So mm, there's only. A well, here's in that part. I'm not going to cut those because those are right at the recession um, point. But we'll check check here. Now this is all you know. We'd get rid of that with clippers, anyways. But just some of that. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of disconnection left. So what you can do is I'm just going to take one kind of bigger section. Just see what reaches. If anything reaches, cut it. If it doesn't, don't. Cool. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and give this a little, uh, a little blow dry. Um, I'm going to use, do you have, do you, do, did you have any product in your, you I came don't in? have it on me. No, I mean, did you oh, have any I when you came in? Yeah. Um, or no? No. I didn't think I so. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So he's, yeah. So clean hair already. Um, so I'm going to use just a tiny bit of a light product just to kind of, um, put everything into place, um, for when we do the sides. So, um, let's see if I got what I want to use. Let's see. Mm. Nah, I think for his hair, I'm going to use clay, the shape of clay, because it's like real fine hair. So I'm just taking a little bit of uh, the shaping clay. Um, this is the shaping clay. Because. Um, yeah, I, I want something that's going to kind of keep the hair into place, but I don't want something that's also not going to let allow the hair to do what it naturally wants to do. Um, because I don't want to be combing through the hair while I'm, you know, doing the fade, the clipper work and it's like tangly, you know, like I'm pulling his hair or whatever. Um, so this is just to kind of keep the shape that we play, that we put in into place. Um, not so much to this is certainly not like a uh, masking. You know, we're not trying to alter anything too much. We're, if anything, we're trying to make uh, make things a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a blow dry. Ah, yes. Was that for this? I don't think that's for this. Oh yeah. All right. So because it's been a while since he's had a haircut, uh, I'm just kind of moving this every which way. Uh, one, to ensure that it's kind of resetting the hair. It's what they would call flat wrapping, I guess. Um, relax any calyx, any growth patterns. Um, but also just to ensure I get it thoroughly dry. Blow drying is a game changer for clients as well. Uh, it can really help save on the amount of product you need to use in your hair every day. So we went that way, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the other way. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you've been doing it? Yeah. Oh, sick. Oh, really? So she's, she's probably been on you, too. She's got all the equipment, so I just yeah. went in the little drawer and grabbed it. Has she ever told you to blow dry your hair? Like, oh, you should blow dry it, you know? Uh, or no? I don't really think. I don't know if you want to Oh, okay. I was going to say, because sometimes, you know, you got to hear it from somebody else. Right. You know, and then, and when then you're... I, when, I, when I definitely, when I grab it, she's like, okay. Yeah. Blow dry. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so that's a key thing right there, actually. I didn't even have to uh, tell him. He kind of noticed on his own. Yeah, uh, blow drying is going to help your hair not go uh, flat so quickly because it helps you get the root dry. So if the root is wet, then yeah, it doesn't matter how much product you put in your hair because it's not going to hold up if the root, basically the foundation of, you know, where you get volume is still wet. And you know, you know, if you want to blow dry at home, you don't have to get all crazy, you know, with a brush or all that, you know, like you see me doing here. Just, uh, no, I definitely don't do it. <laughs> the best thing I can recommend is to just get your hair really, really dry. And so, you can just take, I call it just power dry, that's what I call it, power dry. You know, so just loosely, just make sure you get through all of your hair. And that's it, go left, go right. This will help those calyx that you're, you know, that you think have been unsolvable for your entire life. This will help with that, this will help. You won't have to put so much product in your hair every single day, thus saving you money. The saving, I don't know, you know, summertime, it's hot, humid, got all that junk dripping down your face, you know, it's gross, it's nasty, and then you got to try and get it out, no, that's not a good time, yeah, man, this almost looks like it's supposed to be like this, right, it's kind of cool, it's kind of cool, what do we think? I know. I'm just playing. At some point, your client will think that you are trying to get out of doing a full haircut if you keep asking them about trying other things. <laughs> I'll just play it. Uh, So I'm going to start with a uh, three, just to debulk. So we're going to, we know where that little, number yep, number three. Yep. Kind of These are wall magic clips. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to, I'll show you another technique in a sec once I get rid of all of this uh, longer stuff here. But we can kind of see that shape coming together. There a little bit. I mean, yeah, there's some there's some weight there, but you know, some scissor over comb at the end. Easy. Now we are still gonna go down to a one, of course. Uh, but yeah, this is tracking. It's tracking. I don't really know what that. Yep. It just is. It's coming out the way that we planned. You know, and. This just comes from repetition, you know? Uh, mapping, mapping your thoughts with, uh, yeah, connecting uh, visual visualization with um, techniques on how to get to that point. And, yeah, and uh, also conviction, conviction in your processes, like, you know, it's really easy to um, to just deviate from what you know to be accurate. Like, oh, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm just going to freeform cut it. You know, and I take so I pick it up and cut it because you think it's faster. Well, then you're sit sitting there reworking and all that. So d it it doesn't usually end up being that much faster because what you primarily do when you have enough time to do a haircut, there's a reason that that's your primary way of, of doing things. And it's usually because it's the most effective. Which, and if it's the most effective, I don't know. There's probably a pretty solid chance that it's also the most efficient. Like if I had sat here and done this first without doing any of what we just did. You know, I mean, I would just 
I'd be going in here so blindly, like, you know, it doesn't allow you to, like, see any changes in the shape of the head. It doesn't allow you to, like, I mean, you just, you're going from a three with all that long hair, and then what are you going to do? Try and take sections through all that, you know, regrowth and, and try and connect that to a, a three without, you know, having anything in, in place already. Um, I'm going to clip, you know, because I can see that hair, you know, that hair does want to come down this way, but I don't want it to come down this way for the sake of clipper work. So while I'm doing this part, I'm going to clip Ooh, basically kind of what we were doing with that little connection technique. Yeah, I just want to make sure I keep yeah, so okay. Just gotta listen to the hair. Let the hair tell you what it wants to do. Obviously, that wants to come. I'm not gonna take recession hairs. Do not cut those. Do not cut those. Those are good hairs. And they are part of the front hairline. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I see it. Yes. That'll help the hairs not grow either. Yep. Was that a little heavier than maybe, you know, maybe I had it like wanted it to be? Sure. But I'll take that over uh, anything else because I can always take off more. And look, you see how nicely, for the most part, like we're going to go back and soften that, but you see how nicely that's already sitting? Just, I mean. Now we know, I mean, we have a, you know, we have, we have a map, we got a plan. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my one open uh, as my first guide. Let me, I'll start on the other side, just cause I got a little bit better light. Yeah, so we'll start with our one open. I'm gonna go about the, about here. Uh, I'll continue to drop down, and I will come. I know I'm mumbling now at this point. Um, starting with my one and a half, I don't like. I don't like using the number one as an initial guide, like as my first guide, and trying to like, because I, I just feel like the number one leaves harsh lines. If you can leave a line that's, I feel like, through repetition has you know, in the past has been hard, difficult to get out for really no good reason. Like there's no reason, you know, number one, okay, like, but you know, I don't wanna have to work very hard uh, to get that line out. Uh, so that's why, that's just why I do one open first, or yeah, one and a half first. And, uh, and then, and then I just close it and softly like go below uh, go below the one open make sure shoot that out a little bit and then we'll close it We'll close it. And since I already have this established, it allows me at the, you know, t at the end to really just kind of loosely, you know, as opposed to sitting here going like that and really uh, digging and creating that, that line. Yeah. Need that, need 
that line with the one open? Yes, yep, one open, and now I'm going below it, closed. And since I already have this line here, you know, I can still be very diligent about getting all the hair, but I know where I want it to stop. So, you know, as I get closer to that, I'm really getting, you know, just flicking out, being very soft. Um, yeah, so that I don't have to sit there and, you know, there's no reason to, that you should have to like waste a, waste time with this guard, you know, spending any time anywhere in the middle you know like a half open like sitting there you know from here to here especially if um and number one is the shortest that you're going now if we're doing a skin fade okay yeah i spend time you know in this area where it's not you know in between open and closed but like i mean yeah i just yeah if there doesn't For the most part, yeah, let's, and I'm not gonna even, if there is a little dark spot, I'm not gonna worry about it right now, because I'm gonna go back and, we still got a, a lot of bulk, well, I mean, not a ton, but to get rid of, uh, that will allow me to see any potential lines uh, even better. And, if, uh, If you really feel like your eyes are deceiving you, then use your mirror. Oldest, oldest trick in the book. Enough for now. Um, I will come back and get. Uh, I'm gonna jump right into uh, a number two. Open. I'm gonna go open. Yeah. And what I'm doing here is I am letting this really ride off the head. I'm not digging to you know because I know that I'm gonna have to come um, in between this and what I just did with another guard anyways so I'm not trying to dig with this I'm trying to what I'm doing with this guard is I'm focusing essentially on the transition between this hair and the top portion of this zone we've created so between this hair and right here I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna fade down and get that anyways so I am yes letting the back of the guard essentially I'm not here I'm not you know because we created a square shape if we follow the round of the head well we are just pretty much deleting it everything we just did and you can kind of see how this is revealing that you know that shape that we created for us like yeah, I got to comb here and there and keep a couple little longer hairs out of the way. But with a little scissor over comb, that's going to be, this is going to be a seamless. Um, and really quite simple, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to spend a ton of time. You just close your lever? Yep, I just closed it to a two and I'm just going slightly under that a little. I know I said I wasn't going to, I wasn't like digging. Uh, I did a little bit there. Um, but I'm just, I'm letting the, I'm just moving. Um, yeah, I'm just moving the clipper. I'm kind of letting the head tell me where to, um, yeah. yeah. Same, so I'm, just, I'm not sitting here doing, you know, I'm definitely not digging into this area where the head starts to protrude there. I'm not digging into that area. I don't want to, you know, go over that. So, yeah, I'm letting that be. And I'm gonna go right back below that with the one and a half guard, well, one and a half guard. So 
this open is basically a two, yes, um, but I find it really good for dark spots, touch up, um, even though the one and a half open, I guess technically is a two. Uh, it is still a little different. Why? I, I don't know, it just is, uh, but it works. And it is very, very useful. So then I just closed it. So then I'm gonna really flick at that bottom line that I previously made with my one open. And you see, I really didn't need a lot of room to like fade his hair either. I mean, yes, that's a little, I'll go back and touch that up also. Uh, but we're just trying to get a rough, just trying to get through our guards essentially. And then we can go back and touch up. I just realized I can't, I can't see nothing. Uh, Maybe tilt this way a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And so just a little. With Yeah, and so, yeah, there we go. Do a little more touch up, blend in the beard and all that. Of course, you know, we'll line everything up. Um, but for the most part, you know, everything, everything's in there the way you want it to be. So that's good. Uh, now this is that uh, side that we were talking about earlier. Still see a little spring in those few hairs. That's okay because they are, they are laying. So, yeah, those are fine. And especially when we look at him from a profile view, they are not protruding from the head. Now this is some of those curly wavy pieces that he had that were, you know, coming out from the side of the head. We could soften that at the end if needed. Um, but for now, yeah. Uh, we don't really, don't really need to clip that out of the way. Oh, sorry. Starting to get relaxed in this chair. I know. <laughs> I know. Thank, I, I, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, man, 100%. All right. So we're going to go run through the same steps. Dang. I'm going to take it. At least you guys have really comfy chairs. I will say. <laughs> yeah. Not getting sore. Not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. Do auction like auction house estates with my dad, who's an auctioneer up in Ohio, and a couple barber chairs came through the auction house one time. No the way! Ones, the old ones. Some old Belmonts. Some things are heavy. Dude, you are not kidding. You do not expect a chair. You go to pick it up, and you're like, whoa. Those things are probably huh? They got to be 150 pounds. Yeah, for a chair. Jeez. You're, not, you're not ready for it's that. It's the base. It's the bases, dude. The bases are made out of like solid freaking. Well, I don't even know, go, like so ceramic. Into the ground, right? So like bolt to the ground. Uh, I mean, or just yeah, they, yeah, they can, yeah. Or just be like a solid they can, piece. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. There we go. So that was my two open and then closed. Um, so we're gonna go with that one and a half guard open again. Little bit, there you go. And then we're going to close it. And really, this should be just about it. There's a little, and um, that's just, uh, this is just changes, dips in the head. 
anybody cares, this is called the mastoid. The mastoid bone. The mastoid. Yeah. Okay. That's a good bone to look for when we were doing those radial sections earlier, that little headband looking section. Typically the hair is going to change growth from forward to backwards, right where that bone right behind the ear is. Yeah. So, let's say a little, uh, I guess, uh, Q, physical Q to feel for. There we go. And I'm just going to finish the back here real quick. Uh, sometimes I do do one side at a time. Alex taught me that. He loves when I do fade one side at a time. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's like... <laughs> that's, for, that's okay for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I pretty much already did the two open, for the most part, down through these corners. Um, uh, I will come and, well, see, I just created a little corner there by doing that. Um, uh, that's okay. Cool thing is, I've created this, this zone, this working zone, I guess you could say. Uh, so really... You know, if, uh, if uh, something real small like that happens, okay, fine, not a big deal. Because guess what, we still have to soften some of this with scissors anyways. So we're not really that concerned about that. And don't spend too much time in one area, like I am right now. Because you will figuratively make yourself go cross-eyed. And then you be like, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Uh, so it's good to, you know, if you have to, take a step back. You know, break that like hyper-focus that you have on one section. And yep. So we're going to be tapering the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, just skin this out at the very bottom here. Is that lever all the way close? It is all the way close, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I actually just... Uh, opened it like halfway. I know that seems counterproductive, but we already knocked all this down to a one. And you know, I feel like a neck taper should be, like if it's gonna be the only part, it's not a full blown skin fade, just a neck taper. It should be super blurry. So, and sometimes fading a half into a one, it's like, you know, there's such similar links. You don't really have a guideline. So now it's open all the way. Right, and so I know that I def I do know that my clippers are about to die. That's good. Good thing we're almost done here. Sort of. Close it a little bit because I already opened it halfway. And we're just doing a little back and forth. Um, and then I'm going to take my zero or my one sixteenth, I guess, uh, and just finish blending right up into the one. And right here, I am about, I guess I would say a little less than halfway open. Um, you have to account for the dip in the head right here. so. You know, you'll start, uh, you'll think you need to go shorter than you probably actually do because this dip in the head will create a shadow. 
and will make everything look like a heavy line. And same goes with fading. When it comes to fading, take your pick. Are you gonna, do you wanna keep it below the occipital bone or are you gonna just go for it and go above the occipital bone? Pick one or the other. You don't wanna be stuck fading on a protrusion of the head. It's not, it's not gonna be, it's not a good time. And it's, you're gonna do twice the work for a lesser result, honestly, chances are. So, don't do it. Like that? <laughs> Bang. 4K. And, this, yep, just trimmers at the bottom. Just to really get rid of, the, you know. These are and the slim lines. Um, I really like these. Um, they grab just about every, you know, short, long, beard hair, head hair, you know, like they, they pretty well do it all. Um, are they the most powerful things in the world? Maybe not, but I don't know. I mean, they do good for me. Um, I mean, you might not be able to like mow through some stuff like the, the Babilis ones, but you know what you lose in maneuverability with the Babilis ones, you gain, or yeah. What you lose in power with these, you gain in maybe um, maneuverability, sort of, you know, getting around ears, especially if you're new, getting around ears, things like that. Um, because when I first started, man, I tell you, I had the T, I had the Andis T outliners, and man, that, no, those were way too much, way too much power. way too much power. I mean, I couldn't keep my hand still. And I just felt like I didn't have like any control. I'm gonna keep this pretty natural. I don't want to, I really don't want to take away from too much, like from the haircut itself. You know, I just don't, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that pretty, pretty soft. I mean, we'll, once we blend that into the beard, obviously that'll all look a bit, that'll look a lot better. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do like, that's cool, man. Why the, why the, uh, yeah. From my son, he's uh, been a dinosaur fanatic since he was. That's cool. You know my, you know the what dinosaur I was. Uh, well, actually, that I was a fan of mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah, the one. first dinosaur, I think. Well, actually, I don't know. Was it Land Before Time, land before or was time. it Reptar? Reptar, I think I don't think I liked Reptar. I think I think, Reptar, I, I, think I was scared of him. Reptar was I think Rugrats. Rugrats might have been before Land Before Time. But I, think I don't know. I think they were the same time. Yeah. Ish. But they were both classic. Rugrats is dope. man, looking back. Talk about a weird show. My son knows like all of the obscure dinosaurs that I don't even know the names of. Oh really? Yeah, they'll tell me. I mean dude. Why would, yeah, but, but it's a kid's job to know obscure things because they don't know any real life, like, useful I mean, things yet. He, he was able to tell me what a pachycephalosaurus was when he was, like, four. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. And I, I didn't even know he could say that word. I thought he made it up until I Googled it. Land before, <laughs> land before time, man. I just, I, I knew he started liking dinosaurs, so I started getting him books and stuff like that, and he soaks it all up so fast. You know what else they soak up real fast? Swear words. <laughs> he's pretty good at keeping those to himself. Oh, that's good. Um, I bet when he's alone, he gets a few out. Probably. <laughs> I had a... I had a... Um, 
I had a turtle, a pet turtle. He actually just died like, uh, we're taking a weird turn here. Uh, yeah, that's so nah, because we're on the Rugrats thing, all right? My condolences. <laughs> we're on the Rugrats <laughs> thing. So I'm gonna use my texturizers here. Now I'm not gonna dig super far into this hair because I don't wanna just destroy the shape that we put in. But I do want to soften this. So I'm gonna go through the ends and elevate as I move up. These are just texturizing. Oh, uh, these are Hanzo's. Um, yeah. Um, the ones that I was doing, my normal shears that I was doing all the wet cutting and all that with are uh, Mizutani. Um, and no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, actually, you know what, I'm going to comment because if this needs to get edited out, it can get edited out. Um, if you're willing to pay the money, we're talking between the two brands, Mizutani all day. Now, don't get me wrong. These are great. I love these. I love this pattern. I think this is an absolute necessity. Um, but just overall, as far as quality of metal um, and all that. Yeah, I would say I would definitely say Mizutani. And honestly, I started, I started with Hanzo, and I have more pairs of Hanzos than I do Mizutani's. But that's because I'm also not willing to, you know, I don't have the kind of money to just be like, you know, I, I like Mizutani more, and go throw all those expensive Hanzo shoes in the trash. So can't do that. Going through the ends here. Yeah. A little more softening. Softer. Softer and softer. Because we, yeah, we don't want to destroy the shape. Because you see how I'm not, I'm not really like, you know, getting super far down the hair shaft because that would destroy everything we just created. We don't need to do all that because if we do, that's going to leave a huge hole in the silhouette of this haircut. And then we're going to have to go back and shorten everything else around that. So then we're just going to rework it. So don't get overly, uh, don't get overly excited with, um, you know, your touch up work because like, yes, if we comb the hair down this way, yes. Does that look heavy? Yes, it does. But is he ever gonna wear his hair like that? No, he's not. We need that length. Boom, you know, done. That's it. And so, now yes, I will comb it uh, down a little more towards the back because I know that there was a little bit more length retention uh, back here. So, yeah. And you can see I'm just coming right off the head. Now, I'm going to take uh, a little diagonal section and we are going to just soften this a bit. Now there is nothing wrong with uh, going, you know, further into the hair shaft, but there is a time and there is a place for it, for sure. So, knowing when that deeper um, point cutting. I mean, you can, you know, you could be point cutting this if you wanted to, uh, you know, deep, like almost completely parallel point cutting. See, it's not so much length that's the problem. It's just, it's just weight. It's just the density of the length itself. So, you know, we want, we really want the length, you know, it's just breaking up some of the some of the density of the link. You know, and I'm not going too far down the hair shaft because I don't, yeah, I definitely, I don't want to go so far down the hair shaft to where I'm creating um, hairs that are so short that they're going to push everything else like around or make everything else stand up. Um, and these are great also because if with a couple of closes of these, you've got a soft 
but also straight line. So I mean right here, like I can get rid of those few hairs. So I mean one, two, three, well, yeah, three or four. I mean, and you got pretty much perfectly straight line. So uh, yeah, you know, for your clients that are like, oh, the link's okay, maybe it's just a little heavy. Right here. Now uh, I'm operating like pretty much completely visually. Uh, so this is like what I was saying at the beginning, you know, not get too caught up in the whole, you know, systematic uh, cutting because um, yeah, because yeah, you're gonna have to, um, I ran through all my steps, per, you know, kept everything organized everything like that, you know, um, but still there were obviously spots that needed to be addressed. Now is that where there are like little, maybe, you know, like say discrepancies in what we, you know, in like my technique, my form? Yes, for sure. Um, it's a endless battle, you know, but um, regardless, there's definitely some of, you know, the density here in the haircut that didn't need to be there and as i just turned them in the mirror uh, yep don't like that so we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna have them tilt so it is that little corner that i kind of created earlier um that's fine but you know what i'm glad i saw it because i definitely would have seen it when he got up and then yeah and then in front of the whole shop you gotta be like yeah and then in front of everybody in the shop, <laughs> in a waiting room full of clients, you gotta be like, sir, can you come sit back down? So I can... Yeah, so that's that's a good time. It's good I'm not one of those. Yeah. 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 And because we left it like triangular, we got our movement, we got our length, you know? So here's our... Moves around. Yeah, excellent. That's great. Cool. And then um, I'm going to blend the beard in. What did you say about you wanted to do with the beard again? I just wanted the well, last time I left it like really as full as possible. Yeah. This time I want to take it down pretty short. Are you wanting to like? all even it or yeah. you think okay so you want to do it all like one okay. one length yeah. like one guard even it out and let it grow back out again okay how yeah. sure are you thinking are you wanting it to like Probably i mean the one lighten up a good bit okay yeah. well how about i start i'm gonna blend it in from yeah. the one yeah and then as we progress in lengths you know what i mean as yeah. i'm blending it in yeah, then you can kind of decide uh what length looks good to you yeah, yeah. uh yeah so i'm just starting with like the basically the two uh, the um, the wall one and a half guard and I'm gonna close it uh, and we're really just trying to gauge what he wants to uh, knock his beard down to so I'm not you know spending too much time on this uh, I don't even know you know what mirrors like <laughs> here yeah so that's just like that area right there you know, just to give you an idea. So, yeah, would you rather progress a little longer? Yeah, you know, as we get through here. A little bit longer. Okay. Right? Yeah. I agree. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, yeah. I got stuff all over the place. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the three. I'm gonna go to the three close. We'll go three. And then I'm gonna go to the two open real quick. And then closed just because. Um, and then I'm going to let him look at the mirror one more time, just to double check. So the at the longest point where we're at, this is a three, right? Now, I guess 
I'm just trying to help him visualize this length versus a one coming all the way down through here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm glad you said that because I wouldn't want that short all the way down. Yeah. Um, that, so yeah. You can blend it like you're doing and take, I feel like take more off of the chin a little bit. But you want to keep some length, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I trust, see? I trust you. Okay, you, okay now. Yeah. That's totally fine. So, but do you see how much we have changed? our decision already <laughs> we went from a one and a half essentially all the way through the chin to now a three uh finishing blending in from there and just smoothing out cleaning up the chin area so quite substantially different and i definitely recommend it because uh there's a reason that clients have beards and it's usually because they like the way they look with their face when they are cleaned up if we were to buzz this down to a one and a half, it would entirely change the shape of his face completely. And well, he probably wouldn't be super, uh, super thrilled. Uh, this is my three open, yeah. So, yeah, my three open. And then I'm just gonna smooth some of uh, with beards, a lot of it is like visual-ish. I mean, when they're shorter, yes, it's, you know, f um, a little more systematic, but uh, I need to grab my number four real quick. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> you can tell I'm on camera often. No, that's a joke. Good news is we're almost done, so you won't have to hear any more of my shitty jokes. <laughs> That's um, four, is it? That was my four, yeah, sorry. Um, that was my four, yeah, so. Uh, and we don't have too much like, uh, there's no like visual lines of change as far as like shade goes, you know? That's normally where I would come in and take like a shorter guard, like a two open or three you know and right in between the last card i used and the um, remaining length of the beard you know come with the beard just to kind of smooth it out but not take any big chunks out uh, so um can i grab a drink real quick my i've been doing a lot of talking yeah. i will be right back <coughs> so much talking this whole video my freaking throat is dry I was like, what's happening? Um, it's okay. okay. I think. Can we do the, uh, like, razor of the eyebrows, too? On there? Sure. Yeah, we can do whatever you want, man. Dead. Got him. Uh, is there, do we have a charger over here? Dang. Got him. I know. Actually, uh, wait, do these guards fit that? Okay. I've actually been wanting to try these. 
Oh, I haven't tried these yet. Thanks, dude. Ooh, we got two speed settings. Okay. My gosh, it looks so small. Uh, no. Honestly, I didn't, yeah. I'm not used to anything about these. Having to flick the switch uh, down instead of up. Yeah. So you don't? Yeah, I don't really use those two. It's like for fading, but it's not necessary. See how these do. Yeah, so for this part, I'm going to take uh, uh, a little bit longer guard and just go with it. Um, just to smooth out, like maintain the shape, but to clean up the shape a bit without necessarily removing like bulk. And I can, you know, you can always go down to a shorter guard. Now you see, I'm letting this ride off the face here. See, for the most part, I'm letting that come off the face. I'm not going, you know, I'm following that so much uh, because then it's gonna make all of this look really strange if all of this is tucked in and that is gonna be like, and yeah, we don't really want to do that. So uh, I'm gonna even go a little shorter. I'm just gonna go I actually really like this guard for freehand, like uh, kind of shaping beards, sort of. Uh, I feel like these wide teeth really... Let's not do that. They do like just the right amount. There's so many uh, different 
planes on which you can look at a beard from. So, and find something out of place. I mean, um, so I'm more concerned about, you know, the profile shape of this beard here. Not so much, you know, any of this here. That's a, you know, a separate um, part, you know, but then we have, you know, this here. Uh, so, you know, then I'll come from the side and maybe just smooth that out a little bit. I don't want to do not want to eliminate too much of this length here because the chin protrudes and you will create a light spot if especially even going doing the little with the grain thing like I was doing you do not put that guard flat on the chin because <laughs> you yeah it, yep your client probably won't be super thrilled about what happens after that so um what else did you say eyebrows that's right yeah okay yeah, I gotcha. Um, do you want to knock the mustache down a bit? Uh, Take it off the, the lip the a little? Line, just line it up a little bit. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, the uh, ones that are sticking straight up. Like yeah, 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 gotcha. So this is my one open. Uh, I'm not going to take too much as far as length goes. Um, because we really don't need to. Um, it's more so to just soften uh, some of the weight of the mustache so that when we go and clean it off the lip, it's not this super like uh, just heavy, thick line protruding out from the face. Um, so usually what I'll do then is I'll just take pretty much the same length and I'll just go down. I'll just go with it. You know, and that's going to hit, again, that's not going to eliminate a ton of length or take out any, like, you know, huge patches, if that's what you're concerned about. Um, it's just going to, yeah, eliminate those ones that may be sticking, you know, uh, up into the nose or, um, yeah, just silhouette-wise, you know, out from uh, the side. So we're just going to go ahead and knock these little bit um, unless some, unless somebody asks you know requests it which usually people that I feel like people that like their mustache super thin and high up on the lip they'll usually I feel like they usually let you know um, so I definitely don't um, you know assume definitely don't I mean that goes for any about anything, right? Any aspect of a, of a haircut. You know, don't assume that, assume anything, really. I mean, that's the safest, uh, that's really like the safest thing you can do. Um, I also think, um, I personally think that Revealing too much of the lip, especially if someone has a really dense mustache or a really dense beard. It looks like it looks like a baboon's ass because <laughs> you have all this hair, and then you just have like red lips. You know, if you like edge it up super sharp, and it just it just draws the eye. Like that's what everybody's eye is immediately going to go to. All right, so um, let me get this off, yeah. Let me snag this from behind you. Yep, there you go. Put that here. That's the washer. Yeah. Sound like something that washed out. Dang. Dusty. Clean your headrest, you nasties. You a little nasty. Yeah, you nasties. All 
right, man. I'm gonna go ahead and lean you back a bit. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Perfect. Let me snag that. Um, try and keep a bunch of this hair from going right down your collar. Yeah. Right. I'll just have you turn to your left a little bit. There you go. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pretty much follow, I guess, like, you know, this point already here. Because if I start here, um, yeah, I'm working up as far as the, the just like the shape goes. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know where you'll end up. Now, if it were like a bit of a longer beard, um, or I'm dealing with strictly the bottom line that's up under that bulk, then yeah, sometimes, um, usually I will start from the middle and work out, but that's once I already have the silhouette, you know, the shape of the beard already established and the back corner of his beard is pretty well already right up at the jaw. So we know that we don't really want to go above that. So I'm just gonna freehand like this a little bit. Oh, these things, these things be cutting. And that's another, I mean, just simple safeguard, you know, like I know that, um, yeah, just looking for that noticing that, you know, this corner of the beard is already really about as high as we, we would, you know, anybody really would want it to be, uh, kind of using that as our, as our guide. A little bit more, yep. And then we'll go to your right. Yep. There goes that hair right down the shirt. Yep. Nice one. <laughs> nice one, Zach. Good job, dude. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so corner. And then. And then we'll just go straight. Yep, perfect. Excellent. And yep, so at this point, I'm just kind of refining, really. I mean, connecting the two sides that I just, you know, uh, establish those lines, check and make sure, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're even. Um, Now, when they're laying back like this, it can be hard to get a full scope of each side, you know, without doing this or, you know, I mean, what are you gonna do? Go and stand back here, you know, it's hard. Uh, so, I mean, get the bulkier work out of the way. You know, I mean, 
do the best that you can, obviously, while in this position. But don't waste time trying to, you know, book it to each side. Make sure, because you're not, you can't see both sides very well simultaneously. Anyways, so it doesn't really matter. You're going to sit them up. You know, they're going to be facing the mirror again. And, uh, yeah. And you know what? If, it really, if you're really in your head about it, just let them know. Like I do. Like I'm always in my head about everything. You just let them know. Hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and sit you up so I can get a final look and make sure we got both sides even. And that's that. Instead of sitting them up, not saying anything, they're like, uh, you know, my personal favorite. Um, you gonna fade that? That's my favorite. Dude, those are great. Yeah, sharp. I mean, like good sharp. Um, so we're gonna clean up his neck a little bit more. Just wanna get, oh, good guy. Yep. Not that worried about it. We're gonna clean him off more at the end. Just want to make sure all of his lines are perfectly straight as can be. Oh, one thing I definitely didn't touch on all that much in this video that Alex did is um, ergonomics. So mine suck. Posture. Don't. Yep. Feel free to, if you watch this on YouTube, feel free to roast me. Fine, you know, come up with some good names. Rumpelstiltskin. Looking at it. Hunchback from Notre Dame, looking at, I don't care. Whatever you come up with. Um, do you want to clean up these lines, raise those up a little bit? Sure. Yeah? yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you know what? Let's just go. Ooh. Should we just go, should I just... Hot towel, I mean, you know, if I'm gonna do the top lines and all that, or, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. God, why is he so weird? So weird. Here we go. It's just a little pre-shave oil, man. stubble and a little bit here as well Thing was going to come out of that one. Let's 
shave gel comes out pretty cold. Uh, so I like to, and you don't need a ton of it. Uh, so I try to emulsify it in my hands real quick just to warm it up a little bit. I mean, yes, we are going to use a hot towel, but I'm going to kind of help things out as we can. And We're gonna have to improvise a little because we don't have any beer towels left. So I'm going to use this. I'll place this one on your neck. And we'll let that do its thing. And Maybe you just go to your left a little just while this towel is. Just stretching the skin a little and keeping uh, the beard line as natural as possible while also. You know, I want to maintain, like, or I want to establish, like, uh, you know, a nice line. Um, but I don't want to sacrifice the, uh, yeah, cutting into the natural line of the beard too much in order to do so. Now, you see he has some regrowth here where, you know, the line was maybe, I don't know, bumped down a little far. Whatever, that's fine. Um, but I usually encourage people that they do have, uh, or I let people know that they do have the density to um, allow their line to be naturally a little higher if they would like to. Um, and the benefit to the client is, well, uh, I've never heard, I've never heard of anybody ask for a lower line to bring their line down more. Uh, one and two uh, it's just less maintenance less you cut into natural hairline in any location you know the less uh, less maintenance you got to do so um, here. I've definitely been known to bump that line on accident well, that's okay that's pretty that's very common very very common I just have to go to your right a little bit yeah so I'm going to
Also, giving yourself some sort of visual um, landmark or you know, whatever, uh, physical feature uh, to follow as a guide, whether it be corner, you know, corner of the mouth or corner, you know, top of the mustache if someone has, you know, beard lines that high, uh, will help, you know, so you're not having to do the whole run back and double check thing a mil again a million times. Just want to make sure we got all the little hairs that you can barely see, but they can see them, especially when the light hits them. So make sure you get those. Check and yeah, we're good. We're even. Okay, so now we're gonna get this uh, cold towel off of your neck now, and we're gonna go through it one more time. I'm gonna have you go to your left. There we go. Yep, and perfect. Uh, yeah. So not a whole like not. I mean, yes. Plenty of hair here, but not, you know, overly dense to where, uh, to where the hair is going to like fight us too much. Uh, but prepping the skin is, is, and I mean, if you ask me, is and will always be the most important, the largest difference maker in a good shave and a comfortable shave. And an uncomfortable shave. Now I'm gonna have to go back and get a couple of those longer hairs. That's fine. Um, because now, does every most people have their preference of razor blade? Sure, that's great. I mean, I definitely have mine. But at the end of the day, a razor is a razor. It's sharp. I don't care what brand, whether you like whatever any of them they're all sharp so i mean it's you know if someone's not having a good time or whatever or things aren't coming along super easily it's chances are just switching the brand of razor blade that you're using to another sharp razor blade uh maybe come to your right but there we go isn't gonna be like a make or break you know how you prep the skin is going to be the make or break. Uh, not only for the ease of the shave, but for the comfort of your client as well. I always like to have um, either wipe my, you know, the fingers I'm going to be using for tension. Um, I usually keep like, sometimes I'll keep a towel like in my back pocket or I'll just, you know, or I'll use this towel here. Um, but keeping these fingers dry, uh, you know, so you can keep a good lock on that skin or else you're going to be, you know, sliding and not be able to get good tension on the skin. And as you get closer to uh, the middle, closer to the throat here, just remember that like, you don't necessarily have to put pressure, a lot of pressure here, you know, this direction, push. You don't have to push hard. You know, you can pull, you don't have to use a lot of downward pressure to pull the skin pretty tight. So just a, from a comfort aspect for the client, you know, like I'm not pushing super hard on his, you know, on his throat. Um, I mean, not that, I don't know. And I mean, I, you would think, yeah, that's probably common sense, but you know, um, I don't know. I think there's definitely, there's definitely heavy handed people out there. And uh, you know, uh, I think being mindful of how you can elevate someone's level of comfort 
without them necessarily complaining about it, you know, is a... Uh, is definitely, um, you know, people are going to notice it. Because a lot of times, you know, people might be bothered by something, but they're not going to say anything. Uh, not always. I mean, sure, sometimes they will. But, like, something like that. I mean, so being mindful of little things like that, you know, think about if you were getting a shave, you know, with this amount of pressure, like, maybe discomfort you or, like, if someone's got their palm on your Adam's apple, you know, like, something like that. I mean... Because what are the chances that some guy that you're do that you are doing a shave on and have a razor to his neck is gonna be like, hey man, you know, is gonna complain? I mean, probably not. I don't. I mean, maybe, but it's just good to be uh, mindful of. I think it's a lot easier to be a little more light-handed, and uh, you know. Uh, people be comfortable and have a good experience and all that than it is because I don't always feel it necessary to be extremely heavy-handed uh, so yeah all right um, nice. um, so I'm just gonna clean up the eyebrows a little bit um, I'm gonna keep them pretty natural, especially with men's eyebrows. Um, I kind of like to just round, you know, this peak here a little bit. Um, I don't really, I mean, you know, and you can ask them, of course, ask your client, you know, but I don't love, well, actually, you know what? It doesn't matter, in my opinion. Um, if you like, if, you know, if your client's into the spicy eyebrows, cool. Then give them the spicy eyebrows. But I don't, I don't like to. Uh, Cause the eyebrow hair is very delicate hair. And it does not come back. Uh, does not come back with the quickness. Now, maybe someone can uh, uh, enlighten me, but I have heard that combing eyebrows from their natural position and say taking your little, you know, scissors and cutting that uh, is not not supposed to do that. I've heard, you know, but I see it all over the place, which I could understand why, because then you cut that, well, and then they go lay in their natural place, and then it changes, yeah. So, um, definitely open to, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just a, you know, it's a preference thing, I guess. It doesn't really matter. It's not like... Oh, is that connected? Is that a, is that, can you feel that? <laughs> no way. Get it off, man. Dude, Come on, get it off. look at this. <laughs> look at this thing. It's been four months. Since that I is connected. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to cut that off so you can see it. Appreciate it. Dude. What in the world? That thing was dangling <laughs> off your face. <laughs> I was trimming my beard the other day and I had one of my beard hairs like stuck in my hand. Oh, yeah. You got the you got right in the pore. You got the hair splinter ex yeah. experience. Mm. 
Do you do you now? Do you want me to raise it? You know, like the bottom side of them, or do you normally? I can't trust you. I don't ever really do them. I just it's like okay. once in a while. I just like touch them up. Like the touch. You normally get the like. Okay, when you say touch up. I just get like the straggler hairs. That are oh, like okay, gotcha, gotcha. Place. Okay, yeah. So yeah, if he doesn't normally get that done, then I'm not gonna do it because that's a natural line. Um, but I will say for stragglers for eyebrows. The go-to, it works on, well, for as long as I've been doing this, it works on every density, every color. It doesn't look too short on any kind. Uh, one open, one and a half guard. And just, you know, using the corner tooth a little bit, it will not change like the, it's just the right amount. I've never had anyone complain, you know, I've never, nothing you know it's it's perfect it's perfect now i mean i guess yeah you, you know if you want to sit there with the nothing wrong with doing it with the uh, shears and comb if you want to sit there sit there sorting through somebody's eyebrows with a comb and some scissors and cool but uh i don't know for me smarter not harder and we're also just trying to like get, you know, any um, deviating hairs. Get this off, yeah. And we'll get y'all cleaned up, you know, of course, whenever, yeah, whenever we're finished up. I'm gonna go ahead and sit you up, man, ready? Here we go. Nice one. I love that. That's I love the dinosaur. <laughs> No, well, yes, but you know, after you blow dry someone's hair in place and they lay down, and then it's like, oh, <coughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a quick uh, um, blow dry again, anyways. Yep. Make sure, double check, make sure your beard lines are all straight. Yeah, so I did kind of a step. I know that it looks light right now, you know, but you have the density, and I would think within it comes back. a I couple days. Back, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I mean, if you just use like right below the corners just barely below the corners of the mouth, you know, as your guideline. Right. I guess kind of just like diagonal from the corner of the mustache there. Across. Yeah, then, you know, it'll be a little easier. Yeah. And I mean, you have the fullness there, so why not? Right. Why not, uh, you know, keep take, yeah, keep it, take advantage of it, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let me, uh, Razor on the back of the neck's okay, yeah? Gotcha. Get your neck cleaned up. I'm gonna get his neck cleaned up, and then I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer just real quick at the end, you know, to straighten this back out from him uh, laying down. And then we'll kind of style it up a bit and get some, uh, get a final look at everything. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Is this like an evaluation type video, or like? Uh, or Ooh, like evaluation, a, probably a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. Considering we're here past. I was gonna say, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh God, what's it? Uh, well, I appreciate it, man. I mean, yeah. Uh, the reason I made the appointment and picked you on purpose is because I did a very good job last time. Well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, and thanks a lot. I really appreciate your patience for sitting here doing this and all that. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I hope. Uh, you guys are the only place in town that I would ever come to, so. Yeah, well, we'll, we appreciate that, man. And uh, yeah, just know that, you know, appreciate you being the model so that we can get some, uh, get some content out there that, you know, hopefully, hopefully helps people. Yeah. 
client will always appreciate you going, you know, just below the collar line. Is this, is that scar sensitive yeah, at all? No, it's not really sensitive. Okay. I was snowboarding and I jumped, took a... I think I was going to say, I remember I now that I story. see it. I got, yeah. I got hit by another snowboarder going through the air and his snowboard sliced me open. That's crazy. Uh, I'm not going to hit, I know he said it's not sensitive, but... It is still scar tissue. Uh, Been there for like almost 10 years now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's a personal thing. You know, it's yeah. just me. Yeah, I trust it you. gives me the freaking heebie-jeebie <laughs> like to, I trust your judgment. you know, run the blade over or something like that. So I can, right. yeah. If you don't feel comfortable running the razor over someone's scar, it is completely okay. No one's gonna blame me for that. You can knock the knock the hair off the trimmers and use your little foil shaver to get the stubble off. Give the T-Rex a fresh shave. Oh, dude. <laughs> no. Gnarly. There you go. Don't, don't put that in your video, but that's it. <laughs> Dang. I didn't even know it happened. It was so clean. Really? I, I went, I, like, I snowboarded down the I was going to say, it looks like, yeah, like it just busted open. Like I it just snow, opened. I went down the rest of the hill, and I had a family member at the bottom, and I was like, this kid just hit me in the neck with a snowboard. She's yeah. like, where? And I pointed my neck at her. She's like, oh, no. You need attention right now. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit more of this stubble here. Just right along the edges of the hairline. Excellent. And let me get this off here. Let me I'm just gonna uh, power dry. This is a good time for power dry. Just to get get that little crease out of the hair, you know, from uh, them laying back and all. our finished product and also if you are practicing on a mannequin or if you want to really double check shape in a haircut you can if you don't mind my friend no. if you hop up real quick and if you just stand sideways in front of the mirror there yep and now just hang your head upside down hang your head upside down and let your hair fall a little further like uh like oh, yeah yep and see see our shape here so more triangular. Sorry, I know this is weird. Good. I'm just making sure I yeah, and then there's our shape, slightly square, and then uh, into triangular. And there you go. Yep. 
and it should fall right back into place if everything is the way you know you want it to be. Here's a here's a mirror, man. If you want to spin around, be able to see the back and everything. See what you think. Looks perfect. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. I appreciate that. Absolutely, man. Thank appreciate you, so you brother. Yeah. Let me get you. Uh, and uh, yeah.